Thanks, Makai. Thank you, the Bronx Two Dance team. Ms. Rob Toy, who recently won our prestigious Excellence in Teaching Award at Success Academy. Now, you may think that Bronx Two is somehow number two. They were number two. You might think they were number two in math. You might think they were number two in the borough of the Bronx, or you might think they were number two uh, among socioeconomically disadvantaged, uh, disadvantaged students. Uh, no, they were number two in the state of New York in math. They outperformed Scarsdale, they outperformed the Upper East, they outperformed the Upper West, they outperformed Tribeca, they outperformed many of the citywide gifted and talented programs. They need to go home and go to bed because those were last year's math results. And the math test is this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but let's hear it for their principal, Ms. Bangzer. So we started this uh, August 20th, 2006. We had 155 students, 13 teachers, seven classrooms. I was the CEO and principal. I sat on a kindergarten chair in the hallway uh, on a, next to a kidney table. I taught reading and sometimes uh, math when a teacher was absent. And we are now close to 10,000 students in four out of five boroughs, 32 schools, including the opening of our first high school this summer. When I look out at this beautiful room, I am overwhelmed by your support, your generosity, and mostly your caring for kids and opportunity, because that is what Success Academies is all about. We are here tonight to honor our board member, our good friend, Campbell Brown. <clears throat> Campbell has an illustrious journalist, journalism career, but we are here to honor her for her work in public education, her work around the Transparency Project, her work around telling the truth about public education. That's what, to me, Campbell does every day. She tells us the truth about public education in the city, in the state, in America. She's also on my speed dial because I also uh, try and tell the truth about public education and you need friends and sharp strategic thinking, and Campbell Brown has that in spades. So we are so thrilled to honor you, Campbell, tonight for your incredible contribution to kids. We are also here, uh, Governor Jeb Bush, we are so delighted that you are here tonight. You are here at our very first gala last year, and we are so glad that you are back as our keynote speaker. You've done so much good for the children of Florida. You have done so much good around the country championing ed reform. We appreciate all you have done for this country. Our dinner chair, Daniel Loeb, and his wife, Margaret, have done so much for children in the city of New York. Dan and Margaret opened up three of our schools in Brooklyn two years ago. It was a huge commitment, both of time and resources. Uh, those three schools are flourishing now. This spring, Dan became, took on the responsibility of being our board chair. 
And while everyone here who knows Dan knows that he has incredible energy and ideas, I just want to tell you briefly about three profound ways in which he helped our students. Um, Dan has a lot of ideas sometimes uh, at odd hours of the night. I get emails from him, but I give as good as I get, so I send him emails about challenges that we have. Uh, in middle school, we, our students read the New York Times. My theory was that kids need an addiction, a good addiction. Don't worry for those of you who love the journal. Uh, they read the journal a little later on. It's very difficult for fifth graders to read the, the journal. And I was telling Dan about our passion uh, for current events and for reporting. The kids also do a newspaper. So the next thing I knew, Carl Bernstein was coming to Harlem Central talking about investigative journalism. Then I was talking to Dan about our love of chess. We start chess in kindergarten. We believe that chess is as important as an academic uh, subject. Uh, we compete, in fact, our kids just came back from Atlanta. Six teams are going to Dallas. Last year we took home second, fourth, fifth, and sixth place. Uh, you can clap for that. So Dan brought who else other than Gary Kasparov to come meet our kids. Uh, I was talking to Dan about my desire for uh, kids uh, in Harlem to be exposed to financial literacy and entrepreneurship. So he found me the curriculum and then brought all of our kids to the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, this is the kind of person Daniel Loeb is to incredibly engaged in ensuring that kids have opportunities, are exposed to big ideas. Uh, Dan and Margaret, thank you so, so much for your support of kids in New York City. We, of course, would not be where we are without an incredible volunteer leadership. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Joel Greenblatt and John Petrie, who founded Success Academies. <laughs> Sam Cole, who chairs our governing board. And I would just like to ask, all of you who either founded a, a school or are on currently on a Success Academy board to please stand up so we can salute you. Please stand up. These men and women had the courage and generosity to start a school, and we would not be at 32 schools serving 10,000 children uh, without them. Uh, I know he is here somewhere, but I also want to acknowledge uh, former Chancellor Joel Klein. Joel, where are you? <laughs> Success Academy would not be where it is if Joel Klein had not supported parent choice in New York City. Joel, we're incredibly grateful uh, for your leadership. You might have read in the newspaper that we had some challenges the last three months. It's been a little difficult. Uh, we faced uh, an existential threat to uh, our existence to the charter sector. Uh, did you notice 17,000 parents marching across the bridge? Did anyone see that? Then 11,000 parents went up to Albany. We worked with our colleagues in the charter sector and parents mobilized. But often when parents no mobilize, nobody hears them. Governor Andrew Cuomo heard our parents. Governor Cuomo and Senate Majority Leader Dean Skelos and the state legislature passed the most historic package of pro-charter legislation not only New York State has ever seen, but I would argue the country has ever seen. They showed a commitment to parent choice and our most disadvantaged children getting access to opportunity. Please join me in thanking the governor, Dean Skelos, and the state legislature.
There were also three schools you may have read about in uh, Saturday's Times that were homeless, uh, made homeless, and we were very, very concerned that the 194 children, Andy Malone, please stand up. Andy Malone is the principal of Harlem Central and uh, went through quite an ordeal as he waited to hear the fate of his 194 children. Uh, the three schools, Jamaica, City Hall, and Harlem Central, as of Saturday, have been saved. And we thank again the governor and the mayor. You might wonder why we are moving at warp speed to create high quality options for kids, because this is hard, hard work. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands the crisis that this city and state and country face. It really is an educational disaster of monumental proportion. In 90% of New York elementary schools, the majority of the kids cannot read at grade level. 90% of the elementary schools in New York City. At 91% of the middle schools, the majority of kids cannot read at grade level. It must be better, you might think, outside of urban America, in the heartland. Nope. Nearly 60% of the kids are failing math nationally. By the time the average American student graduates from high school, he or she is reading at a fifth grade level. Maybe internationally things are better. Nope. Even among the top percentage, the highest performing kids, um, we are outdone by our international competitors. In, in the United States, 9% of kids are top performers. In Korea, it's 31%. We are driven every day by these stats. We believe that there is a cure for this ill, and Success Academies has some of those answers. Our kids are not only in the top 1% in the state of New York in math, top 7% in ELA, but in science, 99% of our kids scored the top score of four. I really feel sorry for that one child who did not score a four, but she wasn't feeling well that day. In our math Olympiad, we, we have math teams, and about 40% of our kids in middle school compete on, the math, uh, on our math teams. Two of our fourth graders got a perfect scores, making them among only 3% internationally to score so well. We know the cure. The question is, do we have the will to solve this problem? Your presence here tonight indicates that you have the will. So we ask you to be ambassadors for children all over the city, all over the state, all over this country. Our secret sauce is really joy and rigor, investing in teacher and leader training, and parental involvement. We involve our parents in the success, academic success of their children. There's one other ingredient that I would be remiss if I did not mention. It's not a technical program. It's called love. We love our kids beyond belief. We love them every single day, every hour of every day. And love can actually solve a number of problems. So with that, I want to um, let you know that with Campbell's help, we were able to uh, make this video to illustrate uh, the school design and the love we bring to our work.